Oh, well, here we are at Lapworth Junction, filling up with water. And this is the first time in three weeks we've pointed the camera at us and uh, we're on the move again. It's, yeah, it's the first time in three to four weeks that we've actually moved more than between water points. I think yeah. we've gone about three miles in total uh, up and down. <laughs> we've been ill. We've had <laughs> flu-like symptoms. Uh, we think it probably was COVID knocked us for six, flat on our back for the best part of three weeks. Today's the first day we felt anywhere near normal, isn't it? And the weather's gorgeous, the weather's yeah. glorious. And yeah, we're, you're still a bit tired actually, but we're up for cruising, we're up for moving again now. So we're cruising with our good friends, Pete and Caroline from One Day More Aboard. So we're gonna spend some time with them, get down to Stratford-on-Avon and then on the River Avon and uh, start Living. Living again. It's been a nightmare. It absolutely it's, has been a nightmare. Dogs have been ill, we've yeah. been ill, and there's been stuff going on. But it's, yeah, it's been a shame, but it's also been a good in some ways to completely stop and rest. Oh, yeah. And we're really ready to go now. We and are move indeed, on. yeah. There was so, so much I wanted to film around Lapworth, but maybe we can pop back up after today and uh, do a bit of filming and show you some pictures from when I was a wee lad. We've got seven locks ahead of us to the next decent stopping place yeah. um we're st rich is still feeling a bit tired but because we've got pete and caroline with us we might let them do all the work yeah <laughs> let's see how that goes right i think we're full up with water and ready to go yeah come on then <laughs> Just a short journey today, barely two miles but nine locks to the village of Lausenford, famous for its pies at the Fleur de Lis pub. Beautiful setting these locks are in, and the uh, round roofs of the original lock keepers' cottages, I understand, were made from the wooden forms they built the bridges with. Obviously, this one's been extended quite considerably over the years, but uh, a lovely place to live, eh? The bridges on this canal are low and very narrow, and you'll notice there's a slit in the top of the bridge to allow for ropes to go through when the boats were drawn by horses. And a stunning cottage, though it looks like it might have seen better days. You like to get your hands on there. Well, Caroline and Pete are a lock or two ahead of us, and when they've finished with the lock and closed up they open up the paddle this end so it gradually fills for when we arrive. Excellent. Well this is lock number eight and hopefully just one more after this. It's getting very very warm and I've had enough. You all right Calamity? <laughs> Ooh, what a fab spot to live. Look at that. I love it. Complete with Anderson Shelter type of shed. Fabulous. Well, that's us moored up after nine lux. There's Pete and Caroline up in front in the blue boat. So, be okay here for a few days, eh, friend? I think so. And I'm going to make a chocolate milkshake. Ooh, lovely. Come on. 
So we've popped out for a little walk, a few miles, near the village of Lozenford. And we've been away for the best part of a week, really, visiting friends and family. And it's nice to get back in the countryside. Oh, it's so lovely to be, we always say this, don't we? But it's so lovely to come back. But everything has changed in just a week. The fields have gone straw You always now. say that as well, everything's changed in just yeah, a week. Yeah, it does though, it really does. It's very um, dry, isn't it? We've not had much rain to speak of for weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Plants on the uh, boat have gone crazy. I've just got to go back and pick bunches of sweet peas now. And uh, it's good to be back, though. It's it? a lovely little walk. We've been through meadows, really long grass. So first thing we've got to do when we get back is check the dogs over for ticks. They're becoming a bit of a menace in this country, particularly yeah. further north. And check ourselves as well. We're in long jeans and shirt sleeves, so we should be all right. Dogs are loving it though. They've not had much chance to run because we've been in towns and they've been on leads yeah. um, for the last week, really. A bit cooped up, so they've gone crazy today. <laughs> if I turn sideways, my nose is a different shape now because I went flat on my face on the towpath. And we think I broke my nose and it's uh, yeah. it's just about getting better. But I have got this nice sort of a Roman, Roman nose. Yes, yeah. nose now. But, you know, I've got a few more lumps and bumps than I had when before we started boating, I think. And it's just... Uh, Poor old girl. She's getting old now. She's falling over at the first opportunity. Yeah. Signs of a good life, I think. <laughs> and I hadn't had a drink for days. That's so nothing to do with that. <laughs> All right, let's crack on. Get this little walk done and... Uh, I've got some editing to do and oh. some admin to do and catching up with messages so yeah. sorry if we've been out of touch with people for a bit but we've had awful trouble with the internet while we've been away oh it's awful internet um, this canal it's terrible yeah absolutely terrible but i think we've got enough now to catch up with a cake and a coffee and sit and do admin and that's okay isn't it <laughs> all right come on then. come on then Very really pleasant weather though, a bit drizzly for August. Dogs don't care though, they're really happy. Are you really happy? I'm happy because I'm eating blackberries on the way round. Sorry? There's loads of them. I'm happy because I'm eating loads of blackberries on the way round. And that's a good year for blackberries, isn't it? Seems to be, yeah. Oh, actually, don't drink that milk. <sighs> Yeah, lovely fresh water, Archie. Look at that. That's tested your lungs. Well, we should be skipping up. Feels like that, like this man is. <laughs> uh, we're out of practice. And out of breath. Almost to the end of our walk now, back to the canal, just a bit further down this road. Cup of coffee, slice of cake. Yep. Fantastic. <sighs> They're big ones, aren't they? Oh, they're good. We've got pears that need eating up. Yeah. I can make crumble. Ooh. Crumble, pear crumble and blackberry crumb. Ooh, pear and crumble blackberry. <laughs> <laughs> or even pear and blackberry crumble. Got there in the end. Those wheelie bins detract from the scene somewhat, don't they? Especially when you go to some of these beautiful old towns and the houses have been turned to flats and each flat has three bins. Oh no, it looks a mess. And it takes it? over. Ooh, take those doors off and put some glass doors on there. That would make a great little house, wouldn't it? That's the garage. Laura Macy's just round the bend there. Fantastic. 
and it's found some more blackberries. Well, these ones like they're good. They're good. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, I guess I should also be making some bramble jelly because we've nearly eaten all the jam up. But I must see if I find time this week. Yeah. You can't waste what nature gives you, can you? Well, here we are, back on the boat, checking the dogs for ticks. I'm going to give them a bud. Archie's ears get covered with seeds as well, so they need brushing out. Fill them all over for their ticks. And they actually need another haircut. I've cut their hair quite short this year because the ticks are so bad. But, uh, you love it, don't you? Stand up. <laughs> he just wants to go into his bed now, doesn't he? What I is? know. We've got to dry them off as well. Lots of people say, what do you do with wet dogs on the boat? Well, oh, we've got a pile of these microfiber towels, which dry really quickly. So they just have a good sit down, sit. I think they quite like it, actually. Have a good old rub off. Hey, you like it? Your turn, yes. Look at her nose. Look, she's, <laughs> she's covered, covered in grass seeds. seeds. Uh, but it's, they're good at sitting here. This is the great thing about this boat because they don't mind. They sit here while they get dried off. And in the winter when the fires are light, they just sit by the fire. But I'll put an old blanket on their bed. That's it. A biscuit, a rub down and bed. Well, this is all looking very yummy. <laughs> So we're making crumble today because although it's, um, I don't know, first week in August, it feels like the middle of winter out there. It's cold, it's raining, it's windy. And um, I've also got the oven on for a chilli and uh, to warm us up a little bit. <laughs> and while the oven's on, I might as well fill it up. And you can't waste nature's blackberries when they're out there. You've got to make something. We had those pears that were really overripe. So I've used two pears, big handful of blackberries, um, and I've just given them half an hour in the oven just to soften them. This is my way of doing crumble. I don't know what the official way is. This is what I do. Whether it's apples, whatever, I cook the fruit for half an hour first. Um, my mum never measured anything. My mum is Laura, as in Laura Maisie. She just told me to put quantities in. So I've had to try and measure things out to work out what goes in. So in here I've got two parts plain flour and sometimes i use self-raising flour if that's all i've got it doesn't seem to make any difference and one part of oats just mixed together and i'm now going to put in about a third of i guess most people would use butter we are dairy free so this is a dairy free sp spread and this is very hit and miss i reckon that much i don't know what that looks like but um the trick is now to get this looking a bit like breadcrumbs and just crumble it all up sometimes i have to have a bit more butter sometimes a bit more flour but um just get a nice crumbly mixture i don't know if you have to get air into crumble or not but um you certainly get sticky fingers i'm just going to crumble this the oats really make a nice addition to a crumble, in my opinion, and really good for your heart, and really good for all sorts of things. You like the oats, Rich, don't you, really in a crumble? Really good for crumble, yeah. Really good for crumble. And I don't think you have to be too fussy about this. In my opinion, crumble is a very rough and ready dessert, real comfort food. And now I'm going to get bowls and everything sticky. And just put in enough sugar that you want to sweeten it with. I mean, I would use, I don't know, I think that's about 100 grams. So I've got 200 grams, 100 grams of flour, 50 grams of oats, and 100 grams of, of sugar. 100 grams, that's a lot. 50 yeah. grams of sugar. I'll write it all down. It will go on the website. Don't listen to what I'm saying now. It will all go on the website and I'll work it out. And you'll see now that I've made far too much crumble mixture, but I find that if you put it into... um 
a sealed container it keeps quite a while so um we'll just use that for another thing more blackberries tomorrow maybe and just spoon a nice generous helping that's to me that's about the right consistency it always seems to come out okay and the only time that I ever measure anything and weigh things out is rubbish. It doesn't work. So I think finger feel is the best way. So we had uh, an apple crumble the other week, didn't we? And yeah. we didn't, uh, actually didn't eat it because we were full up after dinner. <laughs> but we had it for breakfast, didn't we, instead? What's wrong with that? It's Isn't fruit yeah, and oats, fruit and oats. a bit of flour. And um, let me just wipe my hands. And that's going to go in the oven for the... Excuse me, that's going to go in the oven with the chilli that's cooking away. It's all warming the boat up. And I reckon if your oven's quite hot, that's about another half an hour in the oven. And of course, in the winter when the fire's on, that gets cooked in the fire stove. But unfortunately, at the moment, not. So here we go. Inks winter oven. dinner, chilli con carne and crumble and custard. Great. What could be better? Nout. <laughs> We're in the lovely little village of Lozenford and um, I'm off on a little walk, multi-purpose. First of all, walk the dogs, that's most important. I've got a parcel to post in the tiny little village post box, which is attached to a house. I'm going to go and visit this place to see if I can get some eggs and a little bit of foraging along the way as well. It's um, Everything is ripening on the trees. There's a little bit of scrumping going to go on, I hope, and some picking. So um, it's going to be a lovely little walk. I just hope I can get everything that I want. This little building used to be the lock keeper's cottage for the lock here. I believe it's now um, a holiday cottage for people to hire out. What a lovely place on the side of the canal. But if you look in the garden, it is absolutely covered with fallen apples. Now I obviously can't get in there because that's private land, but I've got a feeling if I walk down onto the road, I might be able to get some apples. shame because all the apples that have fallen from the tree were damaged or bruised and no good but there were plenty overhanging and it's perfectly legal to pick fruit that's overhanging on a public pathway um, and anyway there were so many apples rolling around that garden I'm sure nobody would, would bother about me having a few so I have got apples I've got blackberries dogs have walked past and is posted Unfortunately, there's no eggs because the lady at the farm said of her 17 hens, a free range in the garden, all of them have decided to molt at the same time and she's getting just one egg a day. So, no eggs. But we can't win them all. Today's journey sees us travel four miles and eight locks from Lausenford to Wooten Wowing. But first, after the first lock, we have to stop, fill up the water tank and get rid of all our rubbish. The Stratford-on-Avon Canal has some really interesting architecture. 
the bridges and especially these small aqueducts carrying the canal over rivers and also railways. Mm, that don't leave much room to get through. in the season. wooden rowing and this is Anglo-Welsh Narrowboats and uh, there's a narrowboat hire company but look at all those boats not out and about in the middle of summer I think people might be feeling the pinch navigation in which is currently closed for refurbishment apparently and uh, thinking back when we went there five years ago I think it needs it <laughs> beautiful evening though fabulous this is where we've ended up mooring tight squeeze but we couldn't get in on the 24-hour moorings behind us so we've just a rope on at the back and one in the middle because we can't put one at the front but that's okay it's secure and uh, we'll be here for a few days before we move on and we're going to get that roof cleaned because it's a bit mucky been doing your washing friend Saw this on another boat today, hanging your jeans over your tiller. What a brilliant idea. So, yeah. Is it nice and dry? Nearly. But I've got to hang my hanging basket up there, so it's done. You've got to do the washing when we can, haven't you? I know. That is when we've got a full water tank and uh, the engine's running. And the weather's good. And the weather's That's good. That's dried in about three hours in there today. But tomorrow is going to be a sculpture. And I've got a whole load of alpaca wool that I bought, which is raw wool. So tomorrow I might be alpaca wool washing day. So apparently it's going to get up to 30 degrees tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, I know what I'll be doing. Yeah. Sitting inside with a good book, I think. Yeah, it sounds like a plan. <laughs> well, it's a beautiful sunny Sunday July morning. And uh, I've taken all the plants off the roof and the bike. Uh, go over the other side, take the poles off and it's time to give the roof a blooming good scrub. We've been under trees for a while, so there's so much uh, dust from the fields blowing over and leaves. So yeah, this is a job I really enjoy doing for some reason. Boy, look at the roof on that. Fab. Wootton Hall is a Grade II listed building dating from the late 17th century 
and apparently belonged to, at one point, Maria Fitzherbert, the secret wife of George IV. Who knew? St Peter's Church is the oldest church in Warwickshire and there's been a place of worship here since the 8th century. The current structure dates from 1035. Amazing. If you're ever in the area doing Shakespeare-y things, do stop off at Wooden Wone and have a look at St Peter's. It really is an amazing church. The A3400 that bisects the village is a really busy road. And especially on days like today when there's a Lambretta meetup in Stratford-on-Avon. The sound of wasps in jam jars was echoing around the village for most of the day. Thanks for watching and if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that bell notification which will notify you as soon as the next video drops. Listen to me, down with the kids.